Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are talking sun gear. We're going to talk about one, why you need it, two, how to wear it effectively so that it doesn't just drive you crazy, um, and three, some of my favorite pieces that I wear because I've tried just about everything on the market because I'm on the water five to seven days a week. Uh, you know, to start off guys, I want to tell you earlier this year I had a little bit of a rude awakening if you will today we are doing something quite a bit different than we've ever done before we are on our way to the dermatologist because bass fishing has inherent risks my skin is starting to look a little strange we are gonna go uh find out what's going on so now it should be nice and numb we're just removing the surface lesion again for analysis at the lab we send this guy out it takes about a week to get the biopsy result. If it's just a benign growth, we'll just be sending you a letter. If you'd like to call because you're curious, you haven't heard anything, uh, feel free. If it's something that needs a little bit more treatment, like likely a few little stitches, this is electrocautery, it stops bleeding. Just barbecuing Matt a little bit. Totally normal. <laughs> hmm. You can't smell that on the video. Right. So I'm feeling again for it's more of a feel than even a look. He has a little bit of a lesion right here. This is really cold. Don't move. Mm. I know. Not super fun. Matt highly recommends this treatment. He's having a really <laughs> super fun time right now. Uh, is that the main area that you've noticed scabbing up right in here? Yeah. And a little bit on the top. Good. Make sure I'm not missing something today. The spots can sort of come and go. Well, guys, that was unlike any other video we've ever done. Uh, hopefully we never do another one of those. Uh, essentially the thing on my arm that they cut off they're gonna send in get checked uh, she said worst case scenario they'd have to come in cut the roots out and then stitch it up but it sounds like a super minor thing just kind of a one-off no big deal uh, the thing on my nose she said was precancerous and uh, what I wanted to stress to you guys was the only reason we even came in was because these things just started showing up you know we're out in the Sun a lot um, I fish a lot of days out of the year. I mean, if I had to ballpark it 300 days a year, somewhere around there, maybe more, uh, I spend a lot of time on the water, a lot of time. And uh, the thing with my nose, I don't want to touch it, it does not feel great right now, uh, is it got rough. It got like a, I would have said scaly, but she described it as sandpaper, and actually that's exactly what it felt like just a sandpapery spot on my nose. I noticed it back probably around like April or May. Same time the thing on my arm showed up. And you know, it makes sense because I start my guiding season in February and I push hard. So that's about the time that my skin is getting that maximum exposure without a break. I'm out there every single day. So I started noticing this thing on my nose and it would get better, but it would never go away. And then it would get worse and it would get better but it was always kind of rough. It just had a, a little bit of a feel to it. And here we are in January. It was way, way, way better. It was almost gone, but not gone. And that was why I wanted to get it looked at. And it turns out it's a good thing we did. You know, at the end of the day, the stuff that they did like this hurts, super minor. You know, this will be gone in a few days. This thing on my arm, worst case, be gone in a couple of weeks. It's, I mean, they already cut it off, but it's probably already done. No big deal, a week from now, be back on the water, rocking and rolling, who cares? Better to take care of yourself. Guys, pay attention to your skin. Get in and see somebody if you need to. Not that big of a deal. Get it handled before you have problems so that we can all keep uh, enjoying this awesome sport together, sticking these fish. It was very eye-opening to me at my age uh, that I could be dealing with early stages of cancer, pre-cancers, uh, it was a real shocker, frankly, and I'm pretty careful. I cover up, and now I'm really, really careful. 
Uh, but I want to talk to you guys about Sun Gear One because it just became something that I'm more passionate about taking care of myself, uh, and I think you should too. But two, I know there are a lot of misconceptions and struggles for people that want to wear this stuff uh, versus just lathering up with sunscreen. And, I, and I'm all for sunscreen. You know, get a good high quality sunscreen and that's a great option. But if you're out in the sun day after day after day after day, you probably don't want that stuff on your skin every day. That's where sun gear comes into play. And there's a variety of options. Uh, you know, for, let's just walk our way through it. I'm just going to show you guys what I wear why I wear it, give you some general recommendations. Um, you know, obviously we as Tactical Bass and we sell sun shirts, just a, a basic sun shirt that is great. We wear them, uh, lots of you wear them. We really, really appreciate it. That's a great option. There's a lot of companies that make a basic uh, sun shirt, long sleeve sun shirt. You wanna cover as much of your skin as possible. And I'm talking to young people, I'm talking to older people. This isn't a glamorous topic, right? If I were 10 years younger and this topic came up, I probably wouldn't want to watch it. Uh, but fast forward just a few years, finding myself in a doctor's office getting chopped on, uh, that happened a lot quicker than I, well, one, I never thought it would happen, but two, it came much quicker than I could have expected. Uh, and again, it's not a big deal. There's, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm totally fine. It's just something I'll deal with periodically from here on, I'll go get checked, get things removed, no big deal. Uh, but I want to prevent any further damage. So let's let's start from the top down. Uh, masks. Masks are probably the biggest thing that you can wear. You know, basically covers your entire face. You tuck it in, and you guys see us wearing this stuff all the time. Pull it up, tuck it under your glasses. Done deal. The biggest complaint that I hear about masks is guys that deal with fogging of their glasses. You can see right now my glasses are not fogging up. Uh, the biggest trick to wearing a mask is breathing with your mouth open and up against the material. If I pull my face back or breathe through my nose, I immediately start to fog. But mouth open up against the material it's mid 70s today it's fairly warm uh, but i guide out here when it's 100 degrees 105 degrees i wear a mask all day long and i do not deal with fogging issues that is the trick a mask is awesome because it's going to cover all of your skin it covers over your ears you combine it with a hat and you are basically good to go the two concerns because there are a lot of different masks on the market i'm not going to tell you what brand you should buy, which brand is good, which brand is bad. That's that's not our job. I will tell you what I wear, why I wear it. This is an Aftco mask, and you know, just like every video, we're gonna link everything down in the video description, the specific models for you. Uh, but the reason I wear it is the length. See how it tucks all the way in, especially in the back. That's the number one area that you have a problem with a mask, is you end up with a burn line back here in the back but that thing lifts up i wear this particular mask because it's super long and it's still lightweight it's a thin material i don't fog up the other place that you need to be concerned with a mask is the bridge of your nose and you can see right there on my face that occasionally i don't pay attention and you just end up burning that little that little tiny spot right on the tip of your nose where it's above the mask and below your glasses. And wouldn't you know it, that's the exact spot that I had to have frozen on my face because I've been careful, but I still had an issue. So be aware and really tuck that mask up and cover that area. If you're aware of that in the back of your neck, a mask solves almost all of your problems. Um, again, I talked about the basic sun shirts. Two other sun shirts that I really, really like this one, so this is a full sun shirt. So you got full sleeves, full hood, goes up over and has a built-in mask. That's an awesome option because it's all incorporated. You never forget a piece and end up getting burned. The only downside of that style is for us bigger guys like me. If I pull that mask down, 
it chokes me pretty good. A skinny guy is not going to deal with that. But if you're a big boy like I am, it's, it's going to just be a little bit uncomfortable if the mask is down. So because I am a bigger guy, I wear this style. And this is hands down my favorite sun shirt on the market. Uh, full sleeved sun shirt, lightweight. Obviously, you guys can tell I almost always wear gray. Because it's a really light color, doesn't absorb a lot of heat, stays cool really well. But this is a full sleeve with a hood, but no mask. This is the main shirt that I wear. And you've seen it in a lot of videos. Uh, but this one, I combine with a mask myself. Because you can see, I took this mask down and it's not a big deal, it's not bothersome. But if I have this mask up and a hood over the top, I am truly, truly protected. Also in the springtime, it's great for sight fishing because you know a hood blocking out light from your peripheral vision makes a major, major difference. But hands down, this is my favorite sun shirt on the market uh, and the one that I wear the most. Beyond that, just a couple of other things. Um, one would be gloves. I've bought every glove on the market. Uh, the Sims glove is, is my favorite. It's super lightweight. And I'm obviously I'm not a brand guy, right? I wear almost, I wear AFCO uh, masks, a lot of AFCO shirts. I wear our shirt, I wear Sims gloves. I, I just don't care. But I, I wear what is most functional. So what I like about the gloves, they're super light. They protect the back of my hands because the back of your hands age very, very quickly because they take a huge amount of sun because they're they're fairly flat. When you're turning a handle on a reel, you know, you're, it's a flat surface exposed to the sun or gripping that reel, you do the top of your hand. And if you look at my skin, I mean, you can tell the tops of my hands, they're aged like 10 years past my arms. It's crazy just from not always having gloves on. But again, back to the gloves, open palm is essential for bass fishing because gloves will drive you insane. Uh, but with an open palm, I have no issues. I've completely gotten used to wearing these. You did notice the first thing I did just out of habit when I put this thing on was fold this first finger back. That is because when I, when I work a reel, I don't want that, that full finger in my way. It drives me crazy. So the first thing I do when I put them on is take that first finger and just fold it down. And then it's totally comfortable. Palm in a reel or work in a reel. Hands are totally protected. It tucks up under the sleeve. It really completes the whole thing and keeps you truly, truly protected. Uh, and again, there are a lot of gloves on the market. I I don't want to say I bought all of them, even though I probably have, uh, but these have have held up the best and that that open palm makes a big difference i own you know three or four pair and i just constantly keep them washed and keep a fresh set on the boat so i can just keep going every day and uh, that is definitely the way to go and then last is pants you guys have probably noticed in the videos over all these years that i never ever wear shorts i don't even know why that is i'm a pants guy i wear jeans almost all the time but if i can't handle it I turn to a lightweight pair of sun pants uh, as it gets really hot and that makes a big difference. But again, guys, the biggest thing is you're not out bass fishing to get a tan. That's not why we're out here doing it. You're out bass fishing because you love it and because you want to keep doing it for the rest of your life. Cover up. It's the best thing you can do for yourself. Invest in quality sun gear. Quality gear is not cheap. You know, and, and again, we'll link you all the gear that we use. It is an investment. Uh, you know, every couple of years I drop a few hundred dollars, maybe more in sun gear just to get fully equipped. But then I don't worry about it again uh, for years. And compared to sunscreen, it would cost the same just to keep buying sunscreen that I keep squirting on. And then I've got that garbage all over my skin. But guys, the biggest difference that I've noticed with sun gear over sunscreen is how I feel at the end of the day. Because sunscreen, the sun is still beating on your skin. It's still on you. When you're fully covered in sun gear, the light is not even on you. And I find that at the end of the day, you know, if I guide a long day and I've had sunscreen on, I get home, 
it's all I can do to take a shower, eat some food, and go to bed. I mean, I'm done. If I wear full sun gear and I go out and work a long day, I get home, I can hang out with the family, eat, watch a movie, work on tactical stuff. Uh, it's amazing your energy level is completely different because you really are staying out of the sun even though you're outdoors. It is much better for you, much healthier. That's why you've seen this entire trend towards sun gear in the industry. And if it's not something you're doing, it's something you need to start doing. Take care of yourself. I want you guys out there fishing 20, 30, 40 years from now, just like I plan to be out there fishing 20, 30, 40 years from now. Hopefully we can do it together. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, take care of yourself, guys. Invest in yourself, protect your body, take care of your loved ones, and you're going to be on the water a lot longer. We appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you soon.